Now, you'll remember that last month, Energy Minister Gwede Mantashe announced new preferred bidders to create more power for the grid. While green energy such as solar and wind are part of that mix, so are three liquid natural gas power ships. They're massive vessels that will be parked offshore to generate power. Well, this week in Parliament, some criticism from the opposition that it's a dirty source of power and we've been locked into contracts for 20 years. Let's find out more from energy expert Chris Yellen. Chris, great to chat to you. So tell me about these power ships. Uh, what exactly are they? How do they work? Well, essentially, uh, these ships get built overseas in Turkey. Uh, they get equipped with so-called gas engines. These are like reciprocating engines, uh, like big diesel engines, except instead of using diesel, they use uh, gas, uh, natural gas, uh, uh, hydrocarbon gas. Uh, this gas, uh, the, the ships are then uh, towed or, or sailed to South African ports where they are moored uh, at harbors for the next 20 years. Uh, and they generate electricity from these gas engines. Um, and they are fueled uh, by separate uh, storage barges, floating uh, storage barges, uh, which contain the liquefied natural gas. Uh, and uh, then they go through a process called gasification or regasification, where the liquid is turned back into a gas and pumped into the gas engines. So really you can have three kinds of vessels, a, 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 a LNG storage barge, a regasification plant, uh, and the actual power ships themselves, which house the gas engines, and they generate electricity from the ship, which is then connected usually by overhead lines or possibly also by cables uh, to shore to a local Eskom substation where they then get connected into the grid. So where does the liquid natural gas come from? I mean, we know that we've got liquid natural gas, as I understand it, offshore, but it's not going to be taken from our reserves. Does it sort of get bought and pulled in? Is that how it works? Look, there is a global uh, market uh, of uh, LNG or liquefied natural gas. The gas comes out of the ground uh, generally in gaseous form. Uh, it's compressed and the temperature reduced uh, to turn it into a liquid and that makes it easy to ship around the world because uh, it, it, shipping the gas, it's not dense enough, so you need that energy density to get it into much smaller volume to make it suitable for shipping around the world. And uh, it's like uh, when you order a ship full of crude oil or a ship full of diesel or, uh, or refined petroleum, you can order a ship full of uh, LNG, it sails in, and then it's offloaded from the uh, ship uh, you know, typically operated by one of the major oil and gas companies like Shell, uh, and then it's the, the LNG is transferred into these floating storage barges uh, in liquid form uh, to be then regasified and uh, supplied uh, to the gas engines on the ship. How soon are they coming to South Africa? When will they start uh, filtering energy into our grid? Yeah, look, the first thing I just wanted to make uh, clear is that uh, these ships are not made in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, they are manufactured abroad and they're brought here. Uh, the LNG is not made in South Africa. It's all imported. So virtually the entire uh, costs of these projects uh, is imported uh, and all the money goes out of South Africa. Uh, it's like etols. Sure. Um, it, it, it's simply money that is flowing out of stuff. So there's only a very small amount of money uh, which is used for uh, uh, local operations and maintenance staff uh, in South Africa. But to answer your question, uh, we are told that these ships will be ready and delivered to South Africa uh, by about the middle of next year. And in terms of the, um, uh, the, the, the contract, uh, which is yet to be signed, I might say. At the moment, it's still just announcement of preferred bidders. They haven't reached financial closure. Uh, the, the power purchase agreements with Eskom have not yet been signed. So there's still quite a way to go. Uh, but assuming all goes to plan, uh, they need to be delivering power into the grid by July next year. Not only these power ships, but all the projects of the risk mitigation IPP program.
Now, uh, there's concerns from some opposition parliamentarians, and I know you have some grave concerns as well, about the long-term costs of these rented power ships, uh, but also um, about the fact that the power might be quite dirty. But first of all, I want to just double-check. Uh, uh, compared to the open-cycle gas turbines, I would imagine they are cheaper and cleaner than that, or not? No, they're no cleaner than, than the open cycle gas turbines. Uh, if the open cycle gas turbines were running on gas, as they were intended to do, uh, problem is that they run on diesel. Right. Uh, so uh, because they're not operating on the the originally intended fuel, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 the OCGTs are in fact dirty. Yeah, um, but these. Uh, gas engines are not clean in that sense. Uh, they also uh, emit uh, uh, high uh, uh, volumes of carbon dioxide, uh, which, as you know, uh, is a greenhouse gas, and it affects climate change, and the world is moving away from these uh, hydrocarbon-based fuels uh, to cleaner fuels uh, and to, uh, to cleaner sources of energy. So uh, it is true to say that uh, they are perhaps to be considered cleaner than burning coal or burning diesel, but really very far from being a clean energy source that does not contribute to climate change. Um, so uh, the, the other aspect uh, I think I, I would like to draw the attention to is the question uh, of, of these long-term uh, contracting. Mm. You know, uh, uh, if you need to hire a car, if you need to use a, you need a car for six months or six weeks, uh, in an emergency, it is really the cheapest uh, to simply hire a car. But if you need a car for six years or, or 20 years, it makes absolutely no sense to rent an Avis car uh, for 20 years. Uh, you rather buy your own car, uh, you look after it, you maintain it, you enter into a maintenance agreement with a manufacturer. Uh, but to, to, to rent a car or to rent a power ship for 20 years is actually unheard of. Uh, this will be the first time in the world that this is done uh, with such a long uh, agreement. And it really does not make sense. And very quickly, you did say that it's not finalized the contract. So is there a chance that government could change its mind? Well, there is likely to be uh, opposition uh, growing. There is already growing opposition uh, from civil society who are really questioning the rationale of the whole thing and whether this was a rational decision. There are also potential challenges around the environmental aspects um, and uh, they do still have to get environmental approval. There can be appeals against these uh, uh, in, uh, environmental authorizations. They need to get port authorizations uh, to moor these uh, ships in South African harbors for the next 20 years. Uh, they need to uh, sign a power purchase agreement with Eskom uh, and Eskom is showing some reluctance uh, in terms of the long-term nature of the agreement. Uh, and, and, and the lastly, the power purchase agreements uh, need to be approved by the regulator. So there's still a lot uh, to, to go through to achieve financial closure. And a point I really want to make as to the ir irrationality of all of this is the question of the costs. Whilst it may appear that the price, the bid price of around about one rand fifty per kilowatt hour is very similar to the other uh, green projects, uh, the reality is that these power ships tariff one rand fifty are not fixed prices but variable prices linked and or indexed to the rand dollar rate of exchange because the fuel is fully imported, uh, linked uh, to uh, the the carbon tax. So if the carbon tax goes up, as it is inevitable that it will do in the next 20 years, uh, so the price will go up. And lastly, the actual spot price of uh, liquefied natural gas, LNG, is traded on world markets in U.S. dollars uh, and, and is very volatile. It's like oil and petrol. Uh, these prices are volatile. And over a 20-year period, there's massive upside price risks. Right. So whilst the prices may appear comparable now to other projects, over 20 years, they could become dramatically more expensive. So important that we look at the small print in these uh, suggestions. Thank you so much uh, for explaining that so well to us. That was energy expert uh, Chris Yellen talking about the plan to bring these three power ships uh, to provide electricity.